Hi, welcome to another edition of Entertainment Elite. I'm Andrew. This is Todd. Today we're going to do our UFC 135 predictions, Jones versus Rampage. Uh, we're going to start off with the heavyweight bouts on the fight, Hunt Rothwell and Brown Broughton. Um, you'll hear us talk about the heavyweight division because we're going to do a, a video on, a he on the heavyweight division, so we're not going to talk about these too much. Um, it's a very weak division as far as experience right now. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a lot of talent, and it's going to go great places. But as of right now, they just don't have a lot of experience in the division outside of a couple of people. So as far as Hunt Rothwell, um, Rothwell's got a 6-7 and seven record. I mean, how he's still employed with the UFC, I'm not 100% Has sure. Has he ever fought? I think this is the first time he's fought in the UFC, correct? I'd have to look. I mean, I'm pretty sure it's the first time he's ever fought. And I'm confused that they even brought a six and seven guy into the company. I mean, they tend to cut people if they lose three fights in a row. So how a guy with a less than five hundred record gets a opportunity on the main card? I can understand maybe a prelim bout, but yeah, anyways, right. I'm picking Hunt to go by knockout, second or third round. I just think he's a more experienced fighter at this point. Got far more impressive wins than Rothwell. I'm gonna go that route. Absolutely, I go Hunt. I'm going to go second round knockout or TKO. As far as Brown Broughton, again, it goes into experience. Um, well, they're both pretty even in that yeah, regard. Broughton's got more experience, but Brown's got more power. Um, he's 11 0 and 1. So I'm going to go with Brown by knockout. I'm going to well, say yeah. second round or late first round. I'm going to go with Brown because I think he's one of those young, up and coming fighters that the UFC really needs in this division to sort of get it up there with all the other divisions right now that are just loaded with talent. Absolutely. So I'm going to go with Travis Brown for sure to beat Broughton. I think, you know, look for him to go from 11-0-1 to 12-0-1 here. I'm going to say first round knockout, Travis Brown. All right, now we're going to talk a little bit about Nate Diaz and <laughs> Takanori Gomi. His favorite fighter, Nate Diaz. Yeah, not really. Um, if you watched my 170 rant, you heard that I don't like Jake Shields. I was ecstatic to see him lose. Jake Ellenberger. Um, What's that have to do with Nate? <laughs> well, it's where I'm going. Nate Diaz is without a doubt my absolute least favorite fighter in any weight class of all time. That's true, and he really hates Jake Shields. I, so I really, he doesn't... It's not even that I hate Jake Shields. I just don't have any respect for him. Um, as far as Nate Diaz, and I'm not saying that I'm going to pick Takanori Gomi because I don't like Nate Diaz. I will give credit where credit is due. Nate Diaz has a great chin. Um, Very hard. I don't think has he ever been finished. I think he has. I mean, within seven losses, I don't think he has seven decision losses. Okay, um, yeah, but still, he's a tough guy to finish. That's yeah. one thing he's always been. I am gonna pick Takanori Gomi by decision, based on the fact that uh, Takanori Gomi I think is a better fighter and a much more experienced fighter. Mm -hmm. As far as Nate Diaz goes, I don't care that he won the Ultimate mm -hmm. Fighter. You people can comment and tell me, oh, he won the Ultimate Fighter, all you want. <laughs> Um, I could honestly care less. There's a lot of people that have been that have fought at the Ultimate Fighter that are unemployed right now. Yeah. Um, Nate Diaz They've is one of the fought most on the same show he won. That absolutely, unemployed. absolutely. Yeah. Nate Diaz is one of the most disrespectful people out there. I can't stand Nick Diaz either, for that matter. Um, you see what kind of respect he has for the organization. Can't even show up for a press conference. Yeah, you'll find that we're very big on respect when it comes to MMA. I mean, we don't like Nate Diaz, Nick Diaz, Brock Lesnar, these guys who are really arrogant fighters and who think they just deserve everything handed to them and don't have to work for it and have no respect for fighters after a fight. I understand if you want to talk it up before the yeah. fight, that's hyping a fight. We're okay with hyping a fight up. But during and after the fight... That's not when you talk. That's when you fight. And these guys tend to do all their talking during and after and not before. Well, Brock, he's always talking no matter what. But the Diaz's especially. They'll be silent pre-fight. Then during and post, they won't shut the hell up. Yeah, they, they just... I mean, when Rory McDonald absolutely demolished Nate Diaz at their, their, their Zero last respect fight. for Rory. Yeah, he wouldn't even look him in the eye and shake his hand. And the same thing with Nick. Nick is obviously a trainer with uh, Nate. When Nick went over to congratulate the corner of Rory McDonald, he wouldn't even look anybody in the eye. You can look that. You can look at that on the DVD. Well, like we said, he wouldn't even show up to a press conference when he's in the title fight. You and step foot into one mixed martial arts class, a kickboxing class, a jiu-jitsu class, any class to learn anything. The first thing they teach you is respect. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they don't have any of it, and I can't stand that. Absolutely well, not. Granted, this has gotten off on a crazy ramp, but still, I agree. I think Takanori Gomi is going to win this fight. Um, 
I kind of hope he does because, like we were saying earlier, you win three, you lose three straight. I mean, in the UFC, nine times out of ten they cut you. Unless you're Dan and, Hardy. Yeah, and uh, well, he appeals to the British demographic, but and this would be three straight losses for Nate. So, and we kind of would like to see Nate cut. I'm, I, it's just my honest, I don't like him. Yeah. Um, but I do actually believe Takano Rigomi is a better fighter here. I think he's going to win it via decision. I don't know if it's unanimous or split. It's going to be a good fight, I really believe. But I think Takano Rigomi is going to win it. All right, moving on to the two main events. We got Matt Hughes versus Josh Koscheck. This one's tough. We wavered on this a lot, which is why this video is taking a while to get up. We wanted to get it up, you know, a week, ago? A, week a week and a half ago. But as soon as they announced Koscheck to replace after the injury, it's been tough. You got Hughes and Koscheck. Both are great wrestlers. Koscheck's obviously the better striker at this point in his career. Hughes has never been known for his strikes. He's used his strikes before to, you know, get people down, and he's ended up finishing them on the ground usually nine times out of ten again, but he's never really been known for his striking. And so for me, I got to go with Josh Koscheck because I think it's a draw on the ground. I know that Matt Hughes is a legend when it comes to the wrestling, but Koscheck's a great wrestler in his own right, and I think that as soon as he connects with Hughes' chin, we all saw last year what happened when BJ connected with Hughes' chin. 27 seconds. You can't argue me. 27 seconds, it was over. Poor Matt. I mean, I love Matt Hughes. I want him to win. He's a sentimental pick because we all want to see Matt Hughes' career continue. But, and if it goes to decision, I think it's Hughes. If it goes to a finish, I think it's cause check. And I, the problem is, is I do think it will go to a finish, and I think it will be cause check TKOing Matt Hughes. I don't want to see Matt Hughes lose this fight. Matt Hughes is going to – he. I want to see his career continue. He already stated that. I mean, as far as Matt Hughes goes, I really think if he loses this fight, um, it's going to push him into retirement a little early. I'm not saying I, Matt I Hughes agree. is going to be a contender or he's going to win a belt again. I'm saying that Matt Hughes has a couple fights left in him. Um, I don't want to see him lose. I don't want to see him end his career prematurely without doing a couple more fights. I mean, that's the honest truth. I'm not saying he hasn't had a great career already. He's only got eight losses um, out of, what, 54 fights or something to yeah, that effect. Yeah, he's 46 and 8 so, in his career. I mean, he's... I mean, I really would like to see Matt Hughes win, but I think it's going to get finished, and I honestly think it's going to be Josh Koscheck by knockout or TKO. I'm going to say second round. Um, I would like to see Matt Hughes submit Koscheck. Oh, that'd be great, but, I mean... If he gets him down, I think it's just a draw there at this point. Yeah, it's it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I mean, obviously, he uses ground game. Like I said, it's legendary. He's a talented fighter on the ground. That's where he's gotten all of his greatest wins outside of that slam that he did to Carlos Newton way yeah. back in the day. But, I mean, Frank Trigg turned him into the rear naked joke <laughs> with all those finishes. I mean, he's he made He put his, Ricardo Almeida to sleep. Yeah, he's made his career on the ground, so yeah. I'm not taking anything away from him, but... I think Koscheck can counter it at this stage in the in his career, and I think he's got the advantage on the feet. That being said, I'm going to pick – if it goes to decision, like he said, we're, we got Hughes on this one. Don't think it's going to go that far. We, all, we both think it's going to be a finish, though. We really Josh Koscheck. Moving on to the main event, we got Johnny Bones Jones versus Quentin Rampage Jackson. Again, we wavered <laughs> on this one quite a bit because – Jones has never been tested. Yeah, John, as far as on his chin. John Jones has never been tested on his chin. I mean, nobody can get near him on his chin because he's got an eighty-four and a half inch reach. Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you get inside on somebody like that? You, yeah. you don't, especially with his speed and accuracy. He hits you three or four times by the time you get near him. And as far as the ground game, <laughs> I, that's a draw. Both these guys are gonna. Strike. I yeah. mean, let's be honest. This is not going to go to the ground. If this goes to the ground, I'll be extremely. The only surprised. way this goes to the ground is with Jones mounting Rampage and pummeling him into the dirt. Yes. I mean, if it goes to the ground, Rampage don't got a prayer. He's going to get ground and pounded until it's done. Yeah. Um, it's going to be a strike. It's going to be a battle on the feet. Jones to me is unlimited potential at this point in his career. He really has potential to be right up there with GSP and Silva as one of the top elite guys in the business. This is that fight for him. I mean, Shogun opened everyone's eyes. Everyone went, okay, this guy's something special. Now this is the moment where he cements that. And I think he's going to do it. I think he's going to murder Rampage personally. Yeah. I think it's going to be at the latest, er, late second, early third round TKO, but it might be sooner. 
If yeah. Rampage can get in on him and get something on it and get get him with a good one on the chin, you never know because, like we said, he hasn't been tested there yet. Yeah. But that eighty-four and a half inch reach is just ridiculous. He's not. I don't think he can do it. And with Rampage, I don't think anyone can do it. With Rampage talking about, he's not afraid of Jones's spinning back elbows. Well, you should be. <laughs> you really should be because mm-hmm. those things can come out of nowhere, and he'll throw them from any any direction. Um, he'll throw them from the bottom. He'll throw them from the top. He'll throw them from the feet. He'll throw him from anywhere. And that's his best asset. His unpredictability with his striking is just incredible. You never know where it's going to come from, what's going to happen. And that's what makes him such a lethal opponent for anybody. So we got John Jones on that one. TKO second round, more than likely, if mm-hmm. it makes it to the third round. Definitely. We do not see this going to decision at all. Oh, God, no. There's no way. So <laughs> If this goes to decision, I'll be blown away. Yeah. I really will. But no matter what, we got Jones coming out on top of this fight. Um, that's our UFC 135 predictions. We need the subscribers, folks. So, and we need comments. And we enjoy up. comments. Comment. It's great. You know, if if you think we're wrong, if go go for it. We don't care. It's all in good fun. I uh, you know? I do great talking with people on comments, um, backflip style. <laughs> um, we're back. And I'm forth sure he'll be watching. Cause... Oh, I hope he does. Um, Oh, and all in all, just if you do watch this, that was a lot of fun. Um, I was all right, and as were you. But um, it's very hard to prove us wrong. It's just because we're fans. <laughs> I don't know about that, yeah. but, you know, we just, hey. Again, if you do comment, it's all in good fun, I folks. I enjoy this conversation. It's always nice. Um, follow us on Facebook, Entertainment Elite one at Hotmail.com. Uh, sign up for Twitter, ENT Elite one uh, look forward to our next video. Probably going to be a heavyweight rant as well as our UFC 136 predictions. 136. We're excited about that one, folks. Probably next week. Um, so just keep an eye out, folks. All right. Enjoy the fights, people.